Father, we thank you for your life and we thank you because you made it possible for us to gather here once again and just for the last year. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the opportunity to lead. Father, we thank you for the company. We thank you for the chairman of this company. We thank you for the workers. We also thank you for the resources for where, for which is used to make sure that this program is sponsored. We thank you for all the stakeholders in this company. We thank you for organizers. We thank you for the players. We say in everything, may you take the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we present this company before you. Whatever problem they are facing in order to raise funds for this cause, Father, make it possible in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remove problems, oh God. Amen. Bring solutions in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we say in everything, may your name be glorified Amen. as they uphold these talents and make them grow. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Excellency, Mr. Rabat Gide Sanwolu, Executive Governor of Lagos State. Your Eminence, Dr. Nime Aidu King, Executive Director, Protection Plus Services Limited. Chairman. Chairman. Okay. Executive Chairman, Protection Plus Services Limited. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am highly pleased to welcome you all on behalf of the aforementioned association to the press conference and presentation of profits for the third under 15 boys and girls Ubon King Memorial Cup 2023 to mark the remembrance of our late icon. It is most unfortunate that the annual Ubon King soccer, soccer tournament is now being played today as late. Ubon King Memorial Cup. May I crave the indulgence of this honorable gathering for a one minute silence for the great icon of our time. <laughs> May the Almighty be pleased with this soul. Amen. What else could have been done to recognize our late icon? He was indeed a wonderful and rare source of wisdom and philanthropy that had made so much difference in the world around him during his days. He has the love of our youth in mind. Without much ado, we believe he is an icon worth celebrating. Moreover, we believe old entity that his name deserves a place in our historical hall of fame. This association has epitomized the face of grassroots football in Lagos State for almost two decades. Having organized youth football competitions of varying age groups, which has led to the discovery of some promising Nigerian football stars. This competition will go a long way at cultivating the youth, foster unity, and promote healthy rivalry among the teams and spectators. It will also go a long way in keeping the children off the streets and away from acts of perpetual youthful exuberance during the tournament. It will also give our amateur league coaches the ample opportunity to scout for talents which can uplift the standard of football in our domestic league in the future. Finally, we thank and salute the management of Protection Plus Services Limited for the sponsorship of the competition. We pray that late Dr. Uber King continue to rest in the bosom of Almighty God. Excellency Mr. Babajide Sawandu, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, the President of Lagos State Grassroots Soccer Association, gentlemen of the press, members of staff of Protection Law Services Limited, 
and Ubon King Foundation, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Three years ago, nearly three years, by December, three years, on the 26th of um, December 2020, our founder, the president of the Ubon King Foundation, my husband, Dr. Ubon Thompson King, passed away after a brief illness. Despite his sudden departure, his work and impact through the activities of the foundation he established continues to resonate. His passing did not stop the work that has started. Despite having to grapple with the challenges of losing our founder so unexpectedly, the Open King Foundation, under my watch, has continued to excel and has proven to be a force to be reckoned with in its mission to contribute to the realization of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 1 and 4. These goals aim to produce by at least half the proportion of men, women, and children of all ages living in poverty and to ensure that young people acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development through quality education by the year 2030. Indeed, the messenger may be no more. We keep reiterating that all the time. But the message continues to speak. His great legacies live on nonetheless. The foundation has been unstoppable, despite the fact that the founder is no more. We are determined to continue the dreams and vision of a man who understood that the sky is wide enough to accommodate all the stars. So he wasn't threatened by the success of others, and he actively worked to ensure that other people succeeded, which is the background to which he decided to sponsor this tournament the under-15 tournament. In the months following Dr. Ubon King's departure, the foundation has received numerous posthumous awards for excellence from several notable platforms and continue to implement programs aimed at bettering the lives of youth, which was the heartbeat of Ubon King. In line with the ideals of the grassroots sports development, Department of the Youth and Sports Ministry, which the purpose for the establishment of that department was to scout, identify, and develop talents as well as raise awareness about fitness and mass participation in sports and recreational activities among the Nigerian citizens. We made that decision as a foundation to do our own bit in conjunction with the Lagos Grassroots Association a state in which our foundation operates to ensure that we touch lives at the grassroots level in a way that we can. One such program is why we are gathered here today for this press conference, the Ubon King Under 15 Lagos Grassroots Sports Competition. On Tuesday, I will go back memory lane a little bit. Um, I've seen some regular faces of the press, but I think maybe one or two people are showing up for the first time. When the organization approached him through his foundation to contribute to sponsoring the under-15 football competition, he didn't hesitate. He saw it as an opportunity to help lift young people out of poverty and lack. The first Ubon King under-15 football tournament took place at the legacy field National Stadium in Surulere, Lagos. The second edition of that competition held in 2019, and it was also a huge success by the grace of God. In 2020, the tournament could not take place due to the worldwide pandemic. We plunged into a pandemic crisis by the insidious coronavirus. And in 2021, as part of activities to honor the memory of our late founder and mark the first anniversary of his death. The foundation again donated trophies for this competition. The foundation believed that it would go a long way in uncovering raw talent that could be trained into formidable sports people, motivating the youth, fostering unity, 
promoting healthy rivalry among the teams and offering scouts the opportunity to discover young talents to replace older players in our league and national teams while also serving as a means of job creation through sports. This tournament has produced stars like the association has rightly mentioned the names of Afemi Martins, Taiye, Taiwo, and more. And now I am also adding two more names to that list of growing talents, Temi Lomunga and Deva Kings, and Jibril Aziz, and it's growing. I think the next names I would love to hear the girls as well. <laughs> yeah. So, in December 2022, we kept our promise to include females. We had promised at the last um, press conference that we had that we're going to start the female arm of the competition. And that promise was kept in December 2022. For the first time, female under 15 teams played and competed for the overall trophy in the finals. They are now preparing for the 2023 edition of the tournament, which the kickoff was last week on the 14th of October, 2023, to herald the beginning of the preliminary matches leading up to the finals that will happen in December 26, 2023. A lot has happened in our, com in our country recently, and um, we are not strangers to what's going on in the country, but we see grassroots football as a catalyst for improving physical and mental health grassroots development and learning. Grassroots football helps to foster community life and it is a proven force for good as indigent and marginalized children and youth can find opportunities to own their skills, build social confidence, grow their leadership skills and encourage lifelong learning. We cannot downplay the importance of grassroots sports in the development of any nation is important it cannot be overemphasized if it is well managed it forms the foundation for sports It's the foundation for any sports um football whatever level anybody wants to play it to the grassroots is the foundation and it evolves into high performance sports that results in the creation of immense value and strategic outcomes if we catch them young, which is what the grassroots football competition seeks to do, these young ones can be mentored to en and engage to channel their talents productively via sports. By doing so, they will have less time for crime or harmful vices that plague our youth. At the grassroots level, talents are spotted and developed for greater exploits. Exploit that will put the individual and the nation in the limelight. Besides helping to encourage healthy lifestyles, because when you're playing, of course, you're exercising, grassroots sports also creates a source of livelihood, including um, professional sports league, because a lot arises from this, and teams, sports media, sports equipment, apparel manufacturers, it creates a lot of um, other streams which helps goes a long way in bettering one's lifestyle, sporting events and tournaments, sports marketing and sponsorship, sports technology, sports tourism. Each of these sectors contributes to the overall economic success of any country and sports diplomacy, which can lead to productive collaborations and cultural exchange among countries. As I bring this speech to a close, I would I love to say this. The future is bright. If grassroots sports are well synergized, it will have a positive impact on the country. Its major challenge, however, is funding and sponsorship, which do not encourage a lot of people to want to participate. It doesn't encourage development and growth of sports in the country. The Obon King Foundation has been steadily contributing to the development of grassroots sports for five years now, and we solicit the support and encouragement of well-able individuals who are able to join us in this worthwhile venture. 
sports of any kind is a unifying force that engenders peace. It knows no tribe. It's one's abilities, it's your skills that speak for you in the field of play. The Obon King Foundation is set to do more with the help and support of partners, friends, and family. We are prepared to do more in the coming year and contribute to the development of youth in Nigeria, Africa, and beyond. Thank you very much. He leaves me with a very good memory. And today is very, very fantastic. Because I have a deep knowledge about this competition right from the founder, even to his present stage, where the chairman, his wife, is anchoring it very, very well. And to cap it all, when this my brother stepped in, I see that. <laughs> say, hey, what is it on that? Because I saw him in the first edition being dragged by the dad mm -hmm. right, to the podium. Very big. I said, this one will finish on that one. <laughs> <laughs> But thank God today he is here trying to make sure that his father's footsteps is full through the encouragement of the Lord. Thank you, sir. My question is this. Yes, one can produce one can competition produce this, it produce that, produce that they are brought by the national team. But as a journalist, I took note of those open king competition produced that are in our national needs. In Nigeria, maybe they may not have thought of that. In the national league, both male and female, they are playing active football in our national league. You recommend too. <laughs> you recommend too. <laughs> that have been internationalized, <laughs> national team. But I can tell you 15. Wow. So we have 20 teams playing the National League. 20 teams from all the states playing the National League. And we also have Women League. You are aware of that. Yeah. All these players are in these leagues playing active football. We can't identify all. But I can tell you that the dream of my friend is right there fulfilling itself. One, when you were reading your, your address, you mentioned what the chairman said you want to make these players achieve. One, to make sure that they fend for themselves through their talents job creation, and other things. But I can tell you that that dream has been fulfilled as we speak. <laughs> because as these players are discovered, they go from team to team, from national team to team, they are catering for their families. They are also providing employment for themselves and helping their friends hopefully find a job. And this is the essence of our family. And thank God. Obon King Foundation has taken it up to continue, even at the female side. Mm -hmm. That is the good news. Please, protection plus services shouldn't be tired. You are living the dream of the founder, and that is the issue. Madam, I thank you so much. Thank you. For not making it so tough for yourself and saying, ah, this is a man, I'm not a man. <laughs> <laughs> it is tough, it's not easy, especially the funding you talked about. You can see the dollar rates today. It's not the dollar rate last year. So you're going to spend more. That means you're spending more. I know the transportation fare 
I took from National Stadium where I parked my car to this place. Last year, I knew what it was. This year, I know. It is not easy, but I want to encourage you to try. Keep the flag flying. Keep the dream on. We are watching. The Amen. benefit will come. Amen. The Amen. benefit will come. And when the benefit, when that player, which was raised by this competition, by this foundation, comes up, you may not know. It be in a flash. We have seen other foundations rescued by the players they produced, Taiyo Taiyo, and so on and so forth. These men wouldn't have been here today if not for those players which they encouraged to come up through competitions. Maybe I'm staying too long to address it. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank you so much. Thank you. Um, my question is, what is going to be new in the third edition? Yes, we've been rolling, rolling it, rolling Come on, it, rolling campaign it. for that, for that feeling. And we are really grateful at the foundation, grateful to God, and grateful for the opportunity. Because we, be, we believe something really strong. Everybody complains about government, government is not doing this, government is not doing that. And sometimes people wait until they have billions to be able to do something. I don't believe that you need to have billions to make a difference. You just need to have a heart, be willing, you know, and somehow there will always be a way. That little effort that you are applying that you think doesn't mean anything, in the long run, it will count for something. Um, that question, what is going to be new? Of course, we, we are open to ideas, you know, because nobody is an island of knowledge. Yeah. So we are open to ideas, we are open to suggestions, and um, that can be well implemented. I think um, I'll also allow my team to speak, maybe Alvin or Ayo have something to add. But I'll quickly say this. Last year when we introduced the female part of the competition, I think um, what happened, we're just experimenting with it. So I believe that for this next one, we will also take it a, a step higher yeah. than what happened last year. Yeah. So that will be it. And then we are also speaking with somebody who is an international sports scout. He, he, he deals with the really big leagues. Alvin can elaborate on that. You know? And we are trying to see if we can get him, not a Nigerian, to see if we can get him to come and witness what we are doing so that it could also help to push what we are doing. So it's still work in progress. Good. Still work in progress. Thank you. So we just to add to what the chairman said. You see, um, we have built a lot of background work as a, at the foundation level. Just it's like she took it out of her mouth. We are working with someone that plays in the international space regarding football to see how we can form strong collaboration. However, we also want the grassroots to be able to give us some of the evidences of the players that have been produced here so far. That will help us push it out there for them to see that ah, this uh, competition we do every year is not a wasted effort. Yeah. There's truly something that's happening. So when they see that, they cannot say, okay, this is real. Let's come and form that collaboration. So you have a part to play for us to be able to push it out there so we can have a very fruitful competition. Thank you. Thank you very much. What you've done, you just brush off the, the very thing that we are trying to do this season. For this edition, what's going to be different is that we are going to do more follow-up and capture. It's not just going to be the play and we will want to have a follow-up system so that we know where the players go to, which league they are playing, so we can track. So when we are able to track, we'll be able to push. Like um, what they've said, there's someone we are talking to, we won't want to mention his name just yet, that wants to come into partnership, bring in um, scouts, foreign scouts, to come and see what we are doing, but we can't really push it out to him until we have uh, documented evidence of progress. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are, and that's what is going to be quite um, like at the forefront of this edition. We want to see uh, the progress of the players, and so we can have something to put together and push forward for people to help us. Yeah, so that's what we're Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.
and my request is a few aspects. Um, I look at the bad economic situation of things. What inspired you and able to keep your own band against the world of football? Okay. And secondly, you are talking about um, monetary players and all that. I want to know the monetary reward for these guys, if cash prize and all that, but first, second, third, respectively, and other outstanding players. Right. <laughs> Answer the first question about what inspires me to keep my husband's legacy. You know, when people say my husband's legacy, I smile because really, uh, my husband's legacy is also my legacy That's because true. we built together, we started on the floor together, and we dreamt together. So, if one person is no longer here to keep that dream going, then and the other person is here, then responsibility immediately falls on the other person to ensure that that dream that we had together, when it didn't even look as if it was going to materialize, that that dream materializes. You know? So that is what keeps that um, vision burning in my heart. And moreover, when, when, when you talk um, legacy, you know, it, it encompasses a whole lot. I also have um, young children who are looking up to me, and I believe that for each time I keep pushing, to ensure that that dream continues, it sends a message to my own children and it also sends a message to other people out there. Because um, most times, when in a society, when a woman loses her husband, society tends to think that oh, everything is over for that woman mm -hmm. and she retreats into a corner, maybe goes into depression. Some of them even don't make it, some die as a result. But you know, I, I had to hold on to God and challenge myself. You know, and it also boils down to my own understanding of life. I understand that even though you, the title of Mrs. as I knew it no longer applies, there's still a lot to be done. It's not over. I still have purpose. I first of all came to this world with a purpose. I came as Uyime with a purpose. Even before I met Ubon King and we got married and we met our strengths, I had purpose, and that purpose doesn't die because Ubon King died. So each day, my prayer is to continue to live out that purpose in a way that it affects my family and it affects society. So that is my driving force. That is my driving force. I also have that passion to see people succeed. It gladdens my heart to see people succeed. And like I tell people around me, I'm not this kind of woman that gets envious that somebody is succeeding. The sky, like I said, is wide enough to accommodate every star. And if we have as many stars as possible emerge in our society, then society will be better. So ultimately, I, I love to see a society where people, young people are succeeding and succeeding legitimately. Because a lot of people tend to think that when somebody succeeds, oh, the person did for one night, oh, the person is involved in one thing or the other. Because of what we see promoted in the media, people who are not, cannot really come out and tell you their source of income, they flood riches online. And then young people see these models and they want to, to mm. copy it. So that is not what we are about. That is not what I am about. I believe that there's legitimate success when you apply yourself, apply your skills, and you trust God. And those are some of the things that we are promoting at the foundation. So it's not just about Ubon King's legacy. It is also my legacy. So that is what we promote. And then for the cash award for this year, we have for the first prize for the tournament, we have uh, 250,000. We have second prize, 200,000. We have third prize, 150,000 and we have a fourth price 100,000 and then um, <laughs> so th those are the prizes that we are looking at this year but if by the time we finish this press conference to when the finals is going to be played we have people who come up because we are also talking to people to see how we can get the buy-in and participation of other people to enable us do more you know, because it's a lot of sacrifice to be able to do this at this time. So if we have these people come up and give us what we are looking at, we would most definitely increase the value of these prices. And that's our, our prayer that we can have more people come up 
and say, okay, we want to support with this and that. And we are an organization that has a lot of integrity. So we'll not have people come and donate money for this cause and then we divert it into something else. It will be used for this cause. So that is what we are looking at for this year. I'm not sure you may need to expatiate on the second question. The first question, the lesson like I think um, Alvin mentioned it when he was talking. And I've even seen from the information I'm even getting now, we didn't even know that they had this volume of success from what has been happening. In fact, right now I think I need a needle to deflate my head because my head is sweating. <laughs> yeah. So it has made me see the need for more follow up. The lessons is that we, we don't just gather and they can attest to it. When we had the pre um, press conference meeting, I told them that I don't just want us to gather every December just for gathering sake to play football. If it is not making sense, we'll scrap it. I told them. So I said I wanted to see evidence that this thing that we are doing is making sense. Because if not, there's no point. We'll look for another cause to support. So I'm happy to hear all this that we have players who have actually gone on to the next level and I, and even international. So it's really encouraging. And with that one, you can even market the events better because you can tell people that this, this, this is it. We are not just doing it because, oh, 26 one king died 26 December. We want to go so that we are not at home thinking about him or something. No, <laughs> that's not the essence of it. It goes way beyond that. So those are some of the lessons that I can quickly grasp that we need to do more follow-up, more tracking of what has been going on. And then for the second question, I didn't quite get to your second question. Okay. Second one is, uh, what is the tournament's message to potential supporters, sponsors, okay. and fans in times of community development and municipal violence? Okay. Okay, I think that question was even answered in my speech. Yes. Because I said something about football helping to prevent um, young people from getting into vices, vices. and inimical um, vices that would land them in trouble. So my message to everybody out there who is listening to me as far as it gets is that everybody needs to join hands with the foundation in whatever capacity to help us do more in, at the grassroots level. Because like I said, everybody is looking at government. We are government. We are government. So we can do our own little bit because like they say, little drops of water make a mighty ocean. So that little effort, that little money that you see as little, that you commit towards making a young person's life and the grassroots better can go a long way. Because um, when you look at the grassroots and you look at the um, level of, um, would I say marginalization, poverty, it's quite discouraging. And sometimes you could ask yourself that, can any good thing come out from Nazareth like they say? But when you hear names of people that are in spite of the odds, in spite of their circumstances, they have come out of that and they've made something of their life. For every one child, every one teenager who comes out from the grassroots and makes something of his life, for every one person in this tournament who um, moves on to play in the bigger league is a testimony to the fact that anybody can be anything. Yeah. So regardless of what your circumstances are, anybody can be anything. And there's nothing that will give you more joy to know that this is my small money that I thought was small. Maybe I'm putting in 5,000, maybe I'm putting in 10,000. That this money has gone a long way, it has contributed to making that person that is out there making waves internationally, you can beat your chest and say yes, there's no greater fulfillment, fulfillment in life than that. So this would be my message. Thank you. Thank you very much.
seeing us through everything that we have had here and all of the discussions that we've had so far. Thank you, great and mighty Father, for this foundation, for the working foundation. Thank you for the legacy that your son has left behind. Thank you, Jehovah, because you are a God who is a giving God. Oh, yes. You gave us all, all, your, all yourself for us. You gave, you gave us your son, your only begotten son, who died for us, my Lord. This was a very sacrificial gesture that you gave unto mankind. In the same vein, my father, your son took it upon himself to give of himself to humanity. We thank you, Father, because we believe that you continue to promote this gesture in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, you are a God who gives provision when you give visions to your children. You gave this vision to your son, and we believe that even if he is no longer here, you will continue to make provisions available for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for as many lives as shall be touched through this foundation in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Our dear Father in heaven, we ask, O oh God, that you will continue to strengthen the chairman who's been left behind to carry on this venture. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you continue to grant her your wisdom, your knowledge, my Father, even as she goes on through the, the business of empowering people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My Father and my God, we say thank you for today's program. We ask that even as your people return back to their different destinations, you will guide them through, you will be with them, you will preserve them, you will protect them. Even the uh, uh, play going on, Father, we ask, O oh God, that your presence will always be with everyone. Amen. As it has been told to us that no injury has been recorded, yes. so shall it continue in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Father, for everything, we say thank you. Thank you. you are awesome. You are wonderful. You deserve our praises. You deserve our thanks for this, O oh Lord, and we we'll continue to praise you and thank you for all that you are doing through this foundation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May all glory and honor and adoration be yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.